Okay, hi. Now in this video, we're going to have a look at bond energy calculations. Okay, so in the previous videos, we had a look at energy level diagrams, and we discussed exothermic and endothermic reactions. Now in this video, we're going to actually put numbers to those concepts. So we can actually work out the amount of energy either released in an exothermic reaction or the amount of energy taken in in an endothermic reaction. Okay, and we do this using bond energies. So first of all, what is bond energy? Okay, so bond energy is basically defined as the amount of energy required to break a given bond between two atoms. So it's the amount of energy required, sorry for this handwriting, to break a bond between two atoms. Okay, now you'll know that energy in physics is measured in joules. Okay, in this case, it would be a tiny, tiny amount of energy to break a single bond. So what we actually do is we um, look at the amount of energy required to break one mole of bonds. Okay, so this is measured in kilojoules, kilojoules per mole because this allows us to use numbers which we can work with and we're not looking at you know just a single bond between two atoms we're looking at a bond between a mole of atoms okay which is way easier that would be one mole of each atom of course so it's one mole pretty much of bonds okay so we use this in order to work out energy change in reaction okay so energy change energy change in a reaction now this is given a special symbol, okay, delta H. The delta there, that triangle, just means change, okay? So that's change of energy during a reaction. And we use the bond energies to work that out. Now basically the formula that we're going to use is that delta H, oops, sorry, delta H is equal to bonds broken. Okay, this is always going to be your reactants because your reactants are the ones in which you are breaking down and turning into products. Okay, take away bonds made. Now that's because you're not breaking these bonds, you're making them, and this is in the products. So you're going to form your products by forming those bonds. Okay, so before we look at an example, there's one thing that we need to realize, okay? And that is that the amount of energy that is used to break a bond is exactly the same as the amount of energy that is released when we make a bond. So, for example, let's have a look at the bond between two hydrogen atoms, okay? Now, the bond energy for this is 436 kilojoules per mole. Now, don't worry, you don't need to remember these figures. You will be given the figures in your questions. Okay, so that means that 436 kilojoules per mole of energy is used to break one mole of hydrogen bonds. It also means that when one mole of hydrogen bonds are formed, okay, this exact same amount of energy is released, okay? So whether it's breaking the bonds or forming the bonds, the amount of energy is exactly the same. Okay, so that makes questions pretty simple. So let's take a look at an example now and I'll talk you through it. So we're going to use that bond and we're also going to be using the oxygen double bond. Okay, and that is 498 kilojoules per mole. And the oxygen hydrogen bond, which is in fact 464 kilojoules per mole. Okay, perfect. Now the question is, what is the change in energy in the reaction uh, inside a fuel cell? So in a fuel cell, you have hydrogen plus oxygen making water, okay? You should see straight away this isn't balanced. To balance it, we have two hydrogens and two waters. Okay, right. Now what can be helpful in these questions is actually drawing these molecules out, okay? Because this, um, well these figures, sorry, they tell you the amount of energy for each bond, but some molecules contain more than one bond. For example, in water, okay, we have H2O. There is not one bond in there, there are two bonds. So what I'm going to do, just to make things simple for you, is I'm going to draw them out. So what I've got is I've got two lots of hydrogen, which is just one hydrogen atom singly bound to another, plus 
one lots of oxygen, which is just one lots of oxygen double bound to another. Okay, and that is going to form two lots of water, which is hydrogen bound to oxygen bound to hydrogen. You can see there that there is one, two bonds, okay, here and here in the water. And so we need to um, take that into account when we're doing our calculations. All right. Now, what I'm going to do then, let's try and make sure we've still got those in, is I'm going to say that in total, the amount... So the amount of energy is going to be this. We're going to say we have two moles of this hydrogen-hydrogen uh, bond. Now, this bond has an energy of 436, okay? But remember, we have two moles of them, okay? So it's going to be two lots of 436, okay? Plus, what's our other one? Well, we don't have two moles. We only have one mole of the oxygen, and that is 498. So that is 498, I could just put one lot of that in brackets just to make it simple. Okay, and on the right-hand side, what do we have? Well, we have two moles again, so we have two times, okay? But we have two bonds in the water as well. So we're going to have to times that by two again, okay? And then we're going to times by the amount of energy in this bond. And that OH is written up here as 464. 464. Okay, obviously I could simplify that because 2 times 2 is just 4 and say 4 times 464. Okay, right, I'm going to scroll down. And if you do this in your calculator, 2 times 436 gives you 872. And if we plus our 498, okay, that's going to give us 1370 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and that is the reactants. Remember I said to work this out, we're going to do reactants minus products. So let's have a look at the products. Well, it's going to be 4 times 464, which will give us 1,856 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now what I finally do is 1,370 take away 1,856, and that is going to give me a solution of negative 486 kilojoules per mole. Okay, now straight away you might be thinking, well, what does that mean? You can't have a negative amount of energy. That's true. The negative sign there tells you that it's given out, okay? So this tells you, this negative sign here, okay, tells you exothermic because it's telling us that this amount of energy is given out. And that makes sense given that this is the equation um, for the process that happens inside a fuel cell. In a fuel cell, we obviously want an exothermic reaction so that we can obtain some energy. So that's um, good there. We, we know that we're right. Okay. If this was a positive sign, okay, that means you've added energy, you've taken energy in. And so that would have been endothermic. Okay. But in this case, we had an exothermic answer and the answer was 486. Okay, now let's have a look at one final example and try, if you can, to pause the video and see if you can have a go yourself. Okay, so what we have is a familiar reaction, okay, and it's the combustion of methane. So CH4 plus O2 leads to the formation of water plus CO2. Two. Okay, this isn't balanced at the moment. We need two waters. Okay, and that means we have four oxygens on that side, which means we have two oxygens there. Okay, now I'm going to give you the bond energies on the side here. So the C double O bond, okay, that has a bond energy of 715. Okay, all of these are in kilojoules per mole. I'm not going to write it every time. Now the carbon hydrogen bond has a bond energy of 413. Okay, the oxygen-hydrogen bond has a bond energy of 464. We saw that before. And the oxygen-oxygen double bond, we also saw before, has an energy of 498. Okay, I'll also, just to make this question slightly easier, I'm going to move this down slightly, just so that... I can draw you the structures. Because remember I said that it's easier if you draw the structures of the molecules out. Well, methane looks like this. Each hydrogen is bound to carbon. So we have one, two, three, and four hydrogens. Okay, so you can see there there's four bonds. 
Okay, and that's being added to two lots of oxygen oxygen double bond. Okay, and those are the reactants. The products are two lots of H2O, which looks like so. Okay, and the last one, which is probably the one which you may get confused on, is carbon dioxide because both of them are actually double bonds. So we have carbon doubly bound to two oxygens. So there are two double bonds there. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you can have a go at this calculation. Okay, so I hope you had a go. Let's run through the solution now. So what we are going to do is of course work out the total bond energy of the reactants and then take away the total bond energy of the products. So here we have one, two, three, four carbon hydrogen bonds. So I'm gonna have four times the carbon hydrogen which is 413 okay 4 times 413 plus and now i have two moles of oxygen here so it's two lots of the oxygen double bond which is 498 okay now that is the reactants now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take away the products which are let's open a bracket now remember water has one two oxygen hydrogen bonds but we also have two lots of those. So it's two lots of two, which makes four, times by oxygen hydrogen, which is four, six, four. Okay? And I should really put a bigger bracket here, just so we know we're taking away the whole thing. And added to that in the products is going to be um, two lots of these, because we have one, two carbon oxygen double bonds. So that's two lots of seven one five okay and that's the sum i'm going to do so now i have the figures all i need to do is plug them into the calculator so it's going to be four lots of four one three which is one six five two plus two lots of four nine eight which is going to be uh nine nine six there we go nine nine six okay that's going to give us an answer of two six four eight okay those are the reactants now what i'm going to take away is the products so four times four six four which is one eight five six okay and two times seven one five which is one four three zero there we go and if i add those together wait wrong bracket there if i add those together i'm going to get three two eight six okay so this is the sum i'm doing and i'm going to take those away and i'll get an answer of negative 638 kilojoules per mole okay so that is my answer that makes sense because look we've got a negative symbol again bearing in mind this is combustion we expect energy to be given out otherwise then what's the point of using the fuel so that all makes sense uh, that is the correct answer and that's how we do the question so I hope you're able to follow along there. If you do have any questions on that topic, then please do feel free to post in the comment box below or send me a direct email using the link and I'll be sure to get back to you. But as usual, please like and subscribe because there are more videos coming very soon. But I look forward to seeing you in the next one.